The first Stanley steam cars were made in 1895, the last one just before 1925. They use basically the same design. This is a 20 horse Stanley uh, from the 1920s, which is mated to a 1936 Ford rear axle. And it starts out with a bull gear here, which is mated up with gear teeth that are on the outside of the ring gear, which is in the middle of the differential. This is a differential case here. There's a differential there. The teeth from here are made up with the other teeth, so there is no clutch. Uh, before they, Stanley's made this, they had a chain drive to the rear axle. The engine was up here. You had a chain coming to a sprocket. Uh, they got a patent on that. They sold their patent, so they had to do this to get around the patent that they had sold. Now, what we have here is at least there's a counterweight which kind of attempts to balance this. You have the, the outboard crank pin, which is here. And this one is horizontal, this one is vertical, so these two are at 90 degrees, so they never get stuck at top dead center. It'll always start. Then you have this connecting rod, which hooks up to this pin. And this is called the crosshead. As you can see, that slides in a lubricated groove so that this rod here goes straight back and forth. It uh, The crosshead makes it go straight back and forth. And then up at the end of this rod, piston rod, there is a piston, which is a relatively thin piston. It goes back and forth. You have a, a steam chest in the middle. which is here, and steam goes back and forth, away it goes. You have a couple of things of interest. Here we have two eccentrics, which run two uh, valve, valve rods, and as you can see, there's a sliding doohickey thing right in here that slides us back and forth. And what that means is that you can, and if you have a long lever on that, it's real easy to move. These eccentrics are at 180 degrees with each other. So you get one set of eccentrics, makes the whole engine turn this way. You slide them back so the other set does the pushing back and forth and it goes the other way. So you can go forwards and backwards without shifting gears, without a clutch, without anything. Uh, which is a real convenience. Not very efficient, but quite of a convenience. And that is about all you need to know once you know that there are the very thin double acting pistons in here that go back and forth like this. These are cylinders. This is called the steam chest that's in the middle. The exhaust comes out here and the steam goes in right here. There's a pipe that goes in there that puts the steam in. There's various openings in the castings which, uh, which prevent the, uh, the incoming steam and the outgoing steam from getting mixed up. And except for these temperature, the heat from the steam getting leaking out all over the place, it's a good idea. At the time Stanley's made their first car, basically the gasoline cars and gasoline engines had barely been invented, barely worked, and were not perfected. One of their big problems was getting a facing for the clutch, and so this avoids the clutch. Back then you did not have synchronizer gears, 
So the gear box was straight cut gears, uh, not easy to shift. You had a double clutch, hit things just right, or there was an enormous grinding of gears. It was thought at the time that women were unable to figure out how to shift gears and do the double clutching, listen to the RPM of the engine to get the teeth to mesh before they crammed them in, into place without a lot of uh, noise and, and gear grinding going on. Uh, so this was kind of handy. Back then they did not have automatic transmissions. There were many things they didn't have. So this was highly effective for a short period of time. What we need to remember when considering modern steam power, you do not have the problems that they had 130 years ago. Uh, we now have different options for how to design, a, in, uh, to design an engine. Uh, basically, nowadays we copy everything we possibly can from the existing automobile internal combustion engines, all of the parts, crankshaft, connecting rods, bearings, pistons, trunk pistons, cylinders, and we use poppet valves as opposed to sliding valves. In fact, in my shop here, I have seven different kinds of valves. Rotary valves are basically not a good idea, but they can be used. Uh, reed valves can be used. Uh, any number of things can be used. All you're trying to do is opening and closing a passageway that lets high pressure steam in or out.